Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Thursday PD. Uh, my name is Georgina Dean, and I'm joining from Eman Jordan. And on top of me is I'm Julius. Hello, everyone. Uh, live from Singapore, 9 p.m. here. And going to the side, same <laughs> time zone. Okay, I'm uh, I'm James. Yeah, in the same time zone, a bit further north in Kuala Lumpur. And going down. Yes, hello. I'm Verena, also in Singapore, also 9 p.m. Same school, yeah, like uh, Julius. That's awesome. Well, we're very happy to have um, Verena with us today, joining as our special guest. So make sure you give her a big shout out in the chat. And we are so excited about today's show, guys, right? We are talking all about the eternal learner. This is probably one of my favorite topics. Uh, for those of you who know me, know how much I always love to learn new things. I've always got my head in a book or in a course. And so we're really excited to talk about today all of the awesome things that we can do as educators to continue our lifelong journey. So let us know in the chat where you're joining from. And um, we'd love to start by talking about what we're currently in the process of learning. So what is it that you are currently learning? It could either be a book that you're reading, or maybe it's an online course, or maybe it's a master's or a PhD even. Um, whatever it is, let us know in the chat so we can celebrate you. And let's throw it out to our um, our folks in the show today. So who would like to start? Who, what are you currently learning? James. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, James, thanks. A um, <laughs> couple of things I'm learning. Um, I'm just polishing up my G script because I'm working on my RDPT uh, program. So learning by doing in that case. Um, but that program's coming along nicely now, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm reading a book by John Kelly called The Inevitable which I think is really good, and it's about future casting. But what I love about it is he's not like most people saying, oh, the future's hard to tell. He's, he's saying, actually, it's pretty easy if you know the basic tech behind it. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, so those are the two things I'm working on. And I'm also watching Adobe Max, where I'm learning lots about the new Photoshop, especially looking forward to de-aging myself. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. I love that. Yeah, congratulations. And uh, we will definitely uh, talk about Adobe in a little bit. So definitely stay tuned if you'd like to know about that. Uh, James, I'd be really interested if you wanted to share, um, you know, not to put you on the spot, a link to mm -hmm. the book you're reading in case anybody in the chat would also like to join you. So sure. feel free whenever you're ready to uh, drop that in as well. Um, yeah. Julius, what are you learning right now? Ah, very good. And I have Verena here as a witness as well. <laughs> so as a school, we're, um, we're using the EST standards. So basically, that's our main sort of umbrella for the school. And um, Verena and I have a lot of discussions about Global Collaborator, which is the next EST standards we want to implement, starting with this week. And we were thinking about a sort of exhibition based on these UN Sustainable Goals, the S S D Development Goals, SDGs. So I'm, uh, I've been in a, in a TEDx show recently, and then I talked about the number 11 Sustainable Goals and UN Sustainable Goals. So that is a sort of a big project that we work on at school, and in particular, loads of stuff just like james um raspberry pi is my with the gerald um controlling the projectors and playing mm -hmm. different information on them on one side uh, a few micro bits for my stem classes as well a bit of electronics and i want to get into google certified coach but i didn't have yet the time so slowly and we have a Christmas holiday coming up, and probably I will just use my time wisely. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff basically on on our plate. And um, well, I can invite Verena to talk more about this global collaborator because she had like really really cool ideas about um, our school project right now. Yeah. Well, first I have to admit, or or I can I can confirm, both of us. We are always want to learn something new. It's ongoing. We are excited and want to get into it, but we yes. have main learning journeys, I think. 
So for me, it's definitely all the ISTA standards for the educators in, in, in the context of the ISTA education. Um, big learning journey, um, big, a lot of reflection, a lot of challenges, a lot of frustration as well. Um, and the second learning journey for me at the moment, what I'm reading at the moment is differentiation. It sounds a very old topic. It is an old topic, but it changed a lot as well since a neuroscience found out a lot about how our brain works and how the networks work in our brain. The three networks I'm big into UDL, Universal Design of Learning for Learning. Um, it's, it's in context also with it. CD, which is coming up at our school in one part of our school. So these are the big main two um, learning journeys at the moment for, for myself, for me. And such amazing areas, not only to learn, but then to be able to share back with your communities, right guys? Like with students, mm. with teachers, and we're in such an interesting time right now, COVID times, I guess we can say, right? Where actually those connections is probably the biggest thing that we're, that our students, our learners are missing, right? That social interaction. So if we're able to connect them globally, what an amazing thing. So like, um, so yeah, I think the work that you guys are going to be doing is amazing. And I know we're going to be talking about um, ISTE in just a little bit. And so we're going to come back to that. I wanted to follow on to what Verena was saying, though, about something I did today, which was really um, hone in and leverage this idea of virtual field trips. So today, because it's Adobe Max Conference Day, I took my year 12 creative media class and we actually... Um, without having them having to log in directly to the conference, I did like a, a share, um, a Chrome tab, and I was logged in as myself in another window, and then the students are participating live. So if they had questions to ask um, these real authentic artists from different places around the world, they could comment in the Google Meet chat, and then I asked in my other window. And so it was interactive in this sense, and it kind of put them on the spot, and they're like, oh wow, look at all these people joining from Kenya, and so Switzerland and America and so um, it was just such a great experience and I think even though they might not be able to collaborate face to face right now if we can expand the people that they can connect with I think that's going to be obviously authentic and meaningful for them um, in retrospect so yeah this is great and um, what about any books are you reading any books right now Verna or audiobooks even maybe no, I'm 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 reading the book of Tom Linson, Carol and Tom Linson, who is a guru in differentiation, yeah. and that I read back and forth and um, again and again to make really connections to my daily life or to connections to, to uh, questions teachers are asking me as an ethic coach. I get these questions or in conversation with leadership to plan the PD. So um, yeah, my goal is really to be knowledgeable here too improve practice right no this is so good i love it and um it's interesting because Julius was saying, I'm just reaching to get the actual book that I'm reading because despite my love of technology, and I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I love to actually cuddle up and read an actual physical book in my hands. I also mm -hmm. like listening to audiobooks, but I like that physical piece. So this is the book I'm reading right now. And Julius was asking about uh, the coaching program. And this is actually part of the Google EC uh, curriculum. So shout out to um, EC Open Chat if you want to connect with them. It's at EC Open Chat on Twitter. And it is a um, group of people that are taking the Google EC co uh, course. So I know Adriana joined. Um, and uh, James has shared the Tom Linson's book in the chat as well. And then the one I just shared now was by Jenny McGarra. So she actually works for Google now. But prior to working at Google, she actually wrote this book called um, Courageous Adventures. And it's about the journey of exploring and integrating ed tech in the classroom and the challenges and she, it's basically like the journey on a sailboat right and how you master the sea under really big challenges and you keep your focus and sail off into the sunset successfully so yeah it's a really great um great story to read 
Um, oh, and Shannon's joining. Good morning, Shannon. Shannon's joining from the West Coast of USA. I find it interesting, guys, that Shannon didn't say the name of her city because Georgina can never pronounce it correctly, but maybe <laughs> Verena can. <laughs> 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 Sh Shannon so is joining from where I I'm gonna not say it right again. I'm sure Vis Visaye Visaye. I don't know. I, I believe on the West Coast, Coast somewhere. Mm. Thanks, James. We That's need great. to see it written in, in Visalia. There it is. Visalia. Visalia. I never say it right. And until she types it, I never get it right. So hopefully I did it some justice. Shannon, let us know what you're reading in the chat, A, eh? and what you're learning and um, about right now. So guys, let's dive into some things that can help our educators and communities out there. There is so much we can learn about. And what I really appreciated Yulia saying was that it's um, time is a big factor, right? That our plates are full. Some of us are back in lockdown. Uh, we're. All, I just started half term like what, an mm -hmm. hour, 30 minutes ago? And mm -hmm. um, where did the first half of the school year go? <laughs> it's already gone. <laughs> yes. so, yeah, so time is really short. So let's dive into some key ones um, that might give teachers some big wins in helping them with their success in their current roles. So that could be related to either blended or flex learning online or distance learning, or could be related to hybrid learning, depending on the model your school's um, using right now. So what do you guys want to start with? What is a big win? One of those th um, pieces for a professional I don't know about you, but I think we should probably play it absolutely fair and go alphabetical. Oh, I like that, James. So I guess that means we start with Apple. Sure. So, um, I, and, and I think the thing about this is, you know if your school is an Apple school. If you have the MacBooks, you've got the iPads, then Apple Teacher is, is definitely the one. It's fun, it's easy to do, there's plenty of resources, they even teach you Swift coding. And I think of all of them, the Apple one has been designed by teachers, for teachers, to do in little bite-sized chunks. And I, I really love it. It's lots of fun. And, um, you know, if you're not very technical, it might take you a little bit longer, but they really do help you along the way. And as I say, if you're an Apple school, you've got the iPad, you want to use, learn the Apple apps, then this is definitely one to do. So that's the first one. Can um, we talk about the first one or do we have to jump really quickly? No, you can talk I about can it. I can confirm it. I can definitely confirm it that it is Apple for the teachers. I mean, we had um, three years ago, it was mandatory for the teachers to do mm. the Apple teacher. Um, I think it's useful to hire people who mm. did this event. <laughs> but OK, that's a decision by the school. Um, we did a follow up for several reasons. Mm. But I recently checked the Apple Teacher again. They really update and update mm. a lot. And they also give a lot of resources, which are mm. super, super helpful. And, and if you're if you only have ethic coaches, then you can also do something with the books, which are very, very mm. helpful. And also, if you're teaching a UK curriculum or a curriculum that requires computer science, their guides to Swift are absolutely excellent. And I think they mean anybody can teach it because they really do help with that computational thinking, certainly in the primary level. Um, so yeah, that's that's also really good. Um, and I like, I like also the fact that you only have to do a certain number out of the set, is that correct? Mm. Yeah, you can do as much or as little as you like. And I like that because it's really flexible. It's like, mm. hey, learn it. Your, and many online learning, like many professional learning courses now are go at your own pace, but you mm. can achieve without actually having to complete everything that's on there, which I like. You can pick and choose mm. the ones that are more, most meaningful for you and your mm. learners or your community. Mm. I like yeah. that. And I think what's really good, <laughs> mm, I think what's really good is that, you know, if you did want to pick an app like Keynote, because I want to get better at Keynote, you can just do Keynote. Yeah. Nice. nice. So, and yes. James, tell us, I'm curious, and I think I messaged you about this offline yes. as well. Uh, I'm curious about doing the Apple Distinguished Educator. And so, okay. James, you shared with so me that, that it's not out yet. Yeah, that's going to be a while just because of the thing. They would have normally started the process for 
2021. I'm afraid it's going to be 2022 at the earliest. Um, and Apple have already officially shared that with everybody. So, um, but the ADE is incredibly competitive. Um, you need to, to really bring it together. Basically, I would say that and being a Google innovator are the two most competitive of anything. So just this is what I would like to know, I would like to learn about. So when you say competitive, it means there's an application process that I have to fill yes. in to join? So it is, okay. it is basically um, a video and an application and, and they have very high expectations. You know. Okay, that's good to know. So it's a small percentage of people that get in then to the program. And yeah. then what does the program look like, um, James, uh, when I get in there? It's an like... in-person event. Um, three, it, it changes a bit, but it's either three or four days. You are literally in a hotel for those three or four days, and you live, breathe, and eat Apple technologies. Uh, so it is properly intense. It, it, it is. <laughs> It is a proper boot camp, that one. But as I say, it's amazing because you're with, you know, you're not going to get that kind of experience unless you're in one of those big events where everybody's together and and you get to meet so many people who have a similar interest. Um, it is it's, fantastic. It's very interesting you said that, James, because you know that I just finished Via 20, which mm. is the um, online version of a similar program for Google yes. Innovator. And I would say that even though I haven't met those people in person, that I've made really strong connections with so mm. many of them mm. that I'm sure would maybe different, you know, in person. And hopefully one day we will get to meet in person. Yeah. But do you think, do you think Apple would eventually give us the opportunity if we're not going to be able to meet in person? Or they're really holding off on, on that option? I, they are definitely holding off for now. Um, what Apple mm -hmm. did this year instead was they did do a big online summer of learning, which was all online. And I think that was a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. a lot of people joined in. Um, that was a bit more loose. But I, I think I think they do want the in-person event, but I, I can't speak for Apple. Um, you know, they get to make those decisions. Um, and I do think that, you know, there has been a huge amount of bonding with everybody coming together. And those people with technical abilities have really come together. And I was on this morning with the, the innovators from 2019. And I have to say that the work that they've done has been incredible. Um, and I think also, um, the VIA program has been good because it's been stretched out over a longer basis. So you actually really do get the time to get to know each other. So I, they really thought that through the Google guys too. So, yeah. Um, it's very uh, maybe, important. Maybe Go I ahead, can mention something about Apple as well because they have these uh, professional development opportunities as well. And mm. here in or a shout out to these guys, uh, mm. Robert, Travis and Jawei. They work with schools in KL as well in Malaysia. And there's no month when we don't, uh, if we don't get a message, hey guys, mm. you're invited to creativity with Mac, creativity with mm. with iPad. Uh, uh, last week I joined uh, Ben Sheridan and um, the other Ben, Ben, not Summerton, the other Ben mm. anyway in, in yeah. Bangkok. We organized this amazing event of how to use like technology. So I, I really like the fact that mm. they, the best educators, the best technology coaches, and they offer like free webinars on mm. how to use app technology, which mm. which I found amazing, really, really good to, to support us and to help us with all this. Yeah. And, and, and in, in Malaysia, uh, Apple organized uh, a big make affair as well last week, which I spoke at. And as I say, right. it was brilliant to see so many ADEs presenting at that each day. So that was fantastic. Okay. I love what that. Apple distinguished school, James. I remember I visited uh, um, during a teach meet. I visited your school gardens, and yes. it was like the banner Apple distinguished school. And I did ask you, "What's that?" And you gave me a very uh, straight answer. So can you repeat that one? <laughs> um, yeah, we. Um, I can't remember what I answered, but you know, basically, we use the Apple tech and, and we use it well. Okay, that's. <laughs> 
That makes sense. <laughs> you know, it's no, but it's true. It's the same as uh, Google Reference School, for example. I know we were mm. communicating that in some of our community threads as well, that it's not necessarily super clear out there, like how you would become an Apple Distinguished School or how you'd become a Google Reference School. But my understanding so far is that you need to be nominated by a partner or um of one of those com two companies at, for your organization to then go through the motions for that. And mm. um, while we're on the subject, like for Google, you would need to have a certain percentage of um, staff who are L1 or L2 or trainer certified mm. at your school in order to meet that requirement as well. But I also recently learned that it's dependent on region. So it really, it could be different for you, James, than it is for me or for... Julia, so it um, just depends where you live. I, I think also realistically, you are either a Google, an Apple, or a Microsoft, and I don't <laughs> think you can be any two or three at the same time. Well, oh, that's yes, and we are a school. Like well, we are basically an Office three six five in terms of emails mm. and platform, mm. but primarily with the Rina. She is totally in charge of the Apple technology because everybody has an iPad one to one. They roll out that program while I'm. But responsible. I mean, you're not you're not an Apple Distinguished School and a Microsoft Reference School, are you? That's what I meant. We will be. <laughs> we are not there yet, no. But we have to split yeah. with the devices, and it could be a good step. <laughs> Yeah. I love that attitude, though. It's we're not there yet. And there's always a yet. And I think this is one of the biggest qualities in an eternal learner. No, I was going to save that for the end, but I'm going to call it now since the yet word came up. It's about growth mindset and about mm. attitude. And if mm. you're open and you're curious, like Verena said, she's always wanting to learn mm. new stuff. And, and as we all are in this mm. uh, session. And so, yeah, mindset is such a big thing, guys. So mm. eternal learning is all about your positive attitude, I think, to it. Um, no, um, absolutely. And I mm. think that I, I think this should be a challenge for us, guys. Can mm. we actually, I see James is trying to push me along. Do y'all see that down there? That's James's way of, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. But I did want to say, now I forgot what I was going to say. No, I remember now. The challenge will be to see which one of our schools or a school in our communities achieves any of the two or three combined. That would be interesting. Mm, that really would. Um, yeah. Okay. Next one is edX with Adobe. Okay. So I think I'm supposed to take lead on that one, apparently. I'm in my Adobe um, shirt today because I took my kids on the field trip to Adobe Mac. So first thing is, now is a conference. Here's the link. I just popped it in there uh, for James. So the link he's got on the show right now is for the course. So Adobe is all about infusing creativity and inspiring creative problem solving across your school community with educators as well as with students. And so... They have these free courses that you can register for here on the Education Exchange. Uh, you just have to sign in. You could even log in with Google or Microsoft if you're any of those, and you can sign up for a free account, and then you can take these free courses. And my favorite thing ever about the Adobe uh, courses before COVID hit, because it's been around for a while, is that they have been the epitome of how what does collaboration in an asynchronous model look like. So you can take these self-paced courses courses with these modules and you create as you go, you blog and interact with people as you go. But my favorite thing is whatever you create, you share back out with the people who are in the course with you and you have to give feedback to each other. You're not able to pass this free course until you've provided constructive feedback to your peers who are going through the same course and receive feedback as well. So it's absolutely phenomenal. I totally stand by it. And no, it's not just because I'm Adobe Education Leader, but I have taken a lot of the courses. If you find me on edX, you'll see that I have also participated in tons of those courses they're really worthwhile um shannon also commented in the cat uh, chat sorry she does have a cat but she commented in the chat that she is finalizing her ace level two right now so there's two parts guys you can take the level one and you'll get this really colorful uh badge called adobe creative educator and basically inspires you to create something to advocate for creative problem solving in your community 
And then you can just release, just uh, last week or the week before, I think, uh, losing track of time in, in lockdown, uh, is the badge level two. And so the level two is a step up and it's really scaffolding right now that you know how you can infuse creativity. Can you design for creative problem solving? And guys, I'm sure you would agree that's been something in distance learning is how do teachers actually design their lessons for distance learning. And so now the level two badge is focused on designing for creative infused lessons. So it's super, super exciting. So check that out. And I also just shared in the chat now to James, Mm -hmm. um, the Adobe Max conference. And so it's almost over, but you can still catch some sessions. And if you register now before the uh, conference is over, you can watch some of those on demand. I have seen the most inspiring things like James, you're going to love it. If you've not checked out the, the Max sneaks yet, they have now in Adobe. Okay. And go check it out. Uh, you can take your phone and I don't remember the app because I've my brain is overflowing with apps now But you can basically like it 3d models They used a hookah sneaker in the max sneaks and then it inputs that into like illustrator for example And it's a 3d printing right from your phone. It's just it's capture or captivate oh. Shannon will let us know what it is. She mm. said it's good um, Okay, so has any of you taken the l1 course yet or interested in taking it? I know Gary said he started it, right? Yes, and he had to confirm tonight with us. Actually, I was waiting for the moment to start looking into it, but I didn't even to have time to, to, to open it. Uh, hopefully by Christmas. So Shannon was saying in the chat, then, no, she's educated. She was saying that she's going to look for, help me, help me, help me. She's going to look for the winter holidays to start off with mm. accreditation. So probably I'll be doing the same. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so um, I think it's 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 very very it's one of the um, one of the best new programs on the market, and it's definitely a, a big advantage. And I think you presented it really really well. So yes, um, I look forward to to, to starting it. <laughs> you guys, you guys are gonna love it, and it's not like you know nobody paid me to say that. As we all know, we're just evangelists for amazing mm. education and ed tech, and, right? And, but and all of these courses are free, right? The Adobe ones. Yes. Free. Yes. Cool. How cool is that? Cool. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> okay, that's Regina just being way too excited. Sorry. Okay. All right. So what's next on our list? And, and we're watching the chat, guys. If you have any questions in the YouTube, let us know and we're happy to, to embark on those. So James has pushed through. It's a good job James is on the alphabetical order, guys. I'm not sure my brain seems to be shutting down uh, after hours. So this is good. Google Educator. All right. So someone else take the floor. I mean, Google Educator is 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 the one that, you know, all the Google apps, um, the level one and level two. Now, I would say these are the most useful. And actually, without with the, I don't know about the Adobe ones, but I think they're the hardest to pass because these are proper, almost engineering style exams, aren't they? Um, so I think they are very, very good. The exams themselves do cost money. Um, but you can get all the training and everything uh, for free to, to see what it's about. And as I say, a lot of schools now, because they're using Google Docs and Google Apps so much, they are strongly encouraging teachers to go through this process and do the level one and level two um, exams. And they are an achievement. Once you've done them, they're definitely a big achievement. And they... They last also for a certain length of time, guys. So there's um, now correct me if I'm wrong, because I think that also changed recently. But for they usually last two to three years. Um, one of them is two and one of them is three. Right, Julius? Yes, correct. Both of them last three years now because I three um, years now. I actually last year I did my recertification. I needed it for mm. I forgot for what I, I had to make an application for something and asked me to re. Uh, Google level two and I was already certified but in 2016 so 2019 I had to redo it so three years cool mm. that's awesome but just check they'll let you know they'll mm. let you know yes, anyway definitely. when you take the cert exactly how long it'll be and also it's hey. totally worth go ahead Please. No, I was. I just wanted to say what James was saying is uh, certification was like twenty dollars, so it's it's reasonable. It's nothing. 
Uh, it's not not very expensive at all. That that's I think it's schools, Yeah, most schools no, are no, happy to pay for it, right? Yes. Um, but I think like COVID-19, this is the whole situation because I think that's, that's the proof that this, these certifications really, really, all these certifications really, really matter. And the reason for that is that teachers who are not taking the certifications realize they're not, not coping with the, with, with the online learning, with the blended learning, with mm. right now it's suddenly online and I have no experience how to use apps. Either if it's Microsoft, Apple, or or or, or Google, they realize mm. and they had to catch up uh, in a really really fast mode. So I mm. reckon uh, most of the schools like increase the the number of their like staff being certified because it really mm. really that was the that was the difference basically that was the the edge in between like being certified or not being certified, knowing how to use these products because they. The, the situations you have, the test they give you, they put you in a, in a, in a scenario when you need to design and to use. I, I remember when I took that, all these certifications, I really, really loved them because they, they were these like open-ended questions. You are meant to help principal to send an email. How would you send an email to 10 persons? How would you create a website to, to share the grades of a student? How would you inform Johnny's mother that he didn't, come to school or something like that and using all these google products and combining them setting an appointment in the calendar these were vital in 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 in, in covid19 mm. and people who mastered them had no problems were like they were flying and we mm. were very happy at school that we we insisted a lot on 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 um, these technical skills you know mm. and also i can i can recommend you i will pass i will paste an, an article about um um, what's his name? Uh, Sam McHugh from UWC. He, the article was to skill or not to skill. And what's, mm. what's the, mm. um, how do you, if you, if we talk about innovation, if, if we talk about eternal, um, uh, I'm just about learning to say it, over, mm. but I don't know, <laughs> eternal <laughs> learner, yes. <laughs> Sounds more like a book. Eternal learner, you, you need to have like the background. You need to have all these skills. You need to have them like this is your ace. And then once you master them, you can go to the next level. You can talk about innovation. Everything is clear. You, you don't have teachers to you coming. How do I attach? How do I send an email? How do I do that? Everything should be, should be covered immediately. And I guess schools change their strategies and most likely as they start the new year they will invest a lot of time in training their staff to to be mm. certified in one or another vendors all these programs I, could, I couldn't agree more and i think that that a lot of leadership now are also starting to think about investing in in getting their school certified in whatever platform you know whatever right. ecosystem they're in whether mm. that's microsoft or google or a bit of both then so be it but i think that that's true and shannon mm. also shouted out Elias in the chat about your case study approach um so well done on that and um i also agree but i think it also goes back to just uh, the pedagogy. So like when we all become educators, we go to school and we get a diploma and a certificate of some sort in education, right? And I remember, I feel old now, but that's okay. I remember back in the day when I was going to university uh, and I graduated, we didn't have these pieces. Like I had a single, you know, how would you, in, how would you create a, a website with your class maybe for your students? And that was it. One course in all of my five-year program. So I think when they reinvent that now, I'm hoping that they're going to consider putting all of these in guys, right? That they should be, like Yulia says, the base so that when newly qualified teachers exit university, they have that already. What do you think? No? And very much. I think it's a very good idea. That's an ideal word. But yes, it's Again, I think COVID-19 changed a lot and changed the mentality and the approach and the visions people have and leaders, leaders have and will definitely invest a lot of uh, resources in, in training the, the staff in the new academic year. <laughs> I think, or, I or, think. Or, I also believe that, I also believe. In our jobs, so there I will be more. Believe, Please. I also believe that. Teachers are more curious now. They feel more comfortable using technology, so they are more open to new things. So we, we as ethic coaches, we can approach them way more often 
because if we talk about your collaborator, for example, they know how to do it. I don't 100% agree with you that you need to know all the tech first and then you can go to the next level. I think you can also learn a lot just in time when you need it, what they actually did when school was closed. But now, of course, that they are more tech savvy, it's easier to integrate. You know, they, they know they got comfortable with the situation that they took a risk, that the situation didn't work out how they imagined it, that didn't work. They got comfortable with this more or less insecure um, situation. Or oh, they know how to deal with this, or it's not so, it doesn't produce heartbeat anymore. So it's okay, I find a solution. So we can go the next step because of this. I'm glad she spoke up because, yeah, it's okay to have different opinions. And um, just like we we understand that students, our learners in the classroom, have different ways of learning. Some like to explore and discover. Some like to have their pen and book and take notes and, and learn that way. So everybody's different, and I think mm. that's okay. But I think us having the option and a variety of different ways we can learn is important quality in eternal learning. So that brings us nicely to our next point that, that James has helped us with again. James is always keeping us on par there. ISTE. And I'm so excited because I'm in the middle of my course. But first, we need to hear from the expert. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, well, I could start with a nice story when I was um, meeting some friends the other, like a week ago. And we did some, um, we worked with some data and we brought the laptops. And um, I, I, we share some pictures or something. And then I use my... Um, uh, OneDrive because I had some pictures from from school and my my friend was using Google Drive and then he immediately approached me Oh, you're a Microsoft guy and I was like no I in my private I use this at school I use that I'm an ethic coach basically an ethic coach is a vendor free and tool free I'm 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 teaching creativity I'm teaching critical thinking I'm teaching this these ideas and you don't require a set you can use them with any tool. In an ideal world, again, yeah, more or less. But the idea is that ISTE is one of these vendors free certification that really, really makes an impact. Uh, it's not the cheapest one. We need to start with the disadvantages, of course. Mm -hmm. But if your school can support you, that's really good. We got support. All our department got into this training. We've been waiting it for a long time, but finally it came last year to Singapore, and then we joined an amazing two-day session. So it starts off with a two-day session in which you share ideas, and then you only talk about um, ISTE standards for educators during this course in order to address the ISTE standards for students. And you don't touch ISTE standards for coaches uh, at all. And as, as an educator, you talk about the seven seven standards and how to implement them and how to um, preach and how to teach to, 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 to your students. So the whole certification is, um, I, I would make this one mandatory for every tech coach or even for some teachers because it, it, it's probably the most comprehensive one. Um, you, you, you talk about collaborations, about critical thinking, about computational thinking, about all these subjects in a, in, 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 in a nutshell, basically. So during the meeting, during the two-day meeting, you share and then you work together, you collaborate with teachers just to have like basic understanding of these standards. Then it follows a, a four-week forum um, online learning kind of like posting material and then writing different articles and then you get feedback. You need to comment like what uh, Georgina, you were saying about like um, Adobe education that you need to give feedback and then you really need to create something for them as well. And then you receive feedback as well. And the final part, the, the, the piece of resistance is a huge amount of work that has to be done in creating a portfolio based on every single, I was just about to say a bad word, but a substandard, <laughs> 25 substandards. And then you need to create an artifact that proves that you address that and then you use that in your teaching. The best part is that all of us, we, when we were thinking, maybe we, we reached like 15, 17, 19, but the, they give you six months, you can start planning your, your lessons and you can teach this one in order to create the artifacts. So each standard has three substandards and 
a few criteria. So you need to create artifacts. So you, you, you're going to spend a few hours, a few good hours, like maybe a few weeks, maybe your holidays. <laughs> it will take you a lot of time. But it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a journey of learning because I had to, to prove. And then I proved my, I created the PLC. So I had to prove that I made that. So I went to screw all my emails and then I had to take a screenshot of my email when I invited people to a PLC, when I gave feedback, when I have like coaching sessions, one-to-one -one with the class, with the students, everything was to be, was meant to be documented. And Again, you can do it, if you're an Apple, you can do it in, 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 in um, Keynotes. If you're a Google teacher, you can do it in Google Docs. If you're a Microsoft in a sway, it's vendor free, platform neutral, and it's a very, very good way to reflect and then to, to, to think about this, uh, about all your journey in education as a tech coach. It's, it's probably one of the best. I would agree with that. And congratulations to you, Leas, guys, because it is a massive achievement. And um, yeah. yeah, hats off to you. I really like what you said at the end, because I've just recently, I'm in the course now, like I finished mm. my online module. And also because of COVID, we didn't have the face to face, but we had that uh, first piece online together as well. And it went well. The portfolio, yes, takes a long time because as you, Leah says, you have to collect your evidence. But what I really liked what you said was A, your agnostic use of tools. So it doesn't matter what you use as long as you can evidence in a creative way, which mm. I think is nice. And also the reflective piece. And isn't that what we're all about, right? Is that education mm. is always a reflection of your growth as a human being in this world. <laughs> I mean, Julius, would you would you say it's similar to doing like half a master's? Because that's what other people have said to me about ISTE. I think it's like a PGCE, to be honest. It sounds like a lot like a PGCE. It sounds like a lot like a PGCE. But that's a very like a UK P thing, isn't it? A PGC is like that pedagogical module that you need mm. to take after you finish your, your degree in order to start teaching. So it's just like an overall holistic approach to education. Mm. You talk about Vygotsky, you talk about all these theories of education. In ISTE, the, you talk about technology. So it's the okay. Bible of, of the, yeah. or it's just the sacred book of <laughs> technology. So that you, you UK know. teachers would know what kind of portfolio we're talking about. For American teachers, I don't think you do that, do you? You don't uh, make a massive when portfolio. I went, no, when I well, but I'm old now, James. I'm going to be forty in in a month and a half. So I I don't know if that's changed in North America. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. let let us know in the chat if uh, that that's the case. We do not. There you go. Up to date information from California. <laughs> okay, there sure. we go. Thanks, so, Kevin. Uh, that's awesome. We have this PGC in, in Germany. Verena can tell you about the uh, Refendariat. Yes. So it, it's basically is the, the organization that approve or not releases teachers, gives certificate, gives. Uh, you have a teacher license, basically, right? Mm. That's that's the PGC. Yeah. Mm. So ISTE would be the teacher license in in terms of uh, tech, which mm. is not classified as a, as a job, but is a mountain guide of of, of uh, mm. the mount technology and education yeah and but i remember my portfolio to... was like this thick you know like two large a4 binders that you sent in and it weighed a ton well wait the, the portfolio is pretty much the same it's just <laughs> <Yeah>. digital. <laughs> but, but honestly when we're thinking about uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Alternative and authentic ways of assessment. How many times in the last year has portfolio and vlogs and blogs come up for students to be able to mm. share their learning? Why not the same for teachers? And it goes back to mm -hmm. my original point. Why not as part of graduating your PGCE, whatever it's called, sorry, because I didn't go to school in the UK, or um, uh, teachers college in Canada or whatever it's called that they have to go through ISTE and Google and maybe not all of them but ISTE is a really nice one because it covers all of the six C's in my mm. humble opinion um, of what we hope to help our learners uh, acquire by the end of their schooling and continue using during their life right as as I global mean, citizens on a PGC you got your work cut out I reckon in your second or third year of teaching I think that's a really good idea but I think okay. it needs to be the trouble. The trouble with the UK is that you have your PGCE, and then you have a little bit of support in your first year, and then all the support disappears. But what they actually need is a three, four-year program 
and you know maybe 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 isti can be like a chapter or like a unit in one of the speeches that that's would make what sense. i mean yeah it that would make, make sense to have technology as a unit and it would make sense for it to be a bit further down the line after you've basically survived the basics definitely because it's totally necessary in covid in covid situation yeah. and just to just to uh, also, sorry you, you, uh, I, I just want to say so one sentence uh, we're going to give Ver Verena the floor because yeah, she would like to say something, Julius. Yes, 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 absolutely. Please, Verena. Remember three years ago when we started thinking about how to implement the ISTA standards and we had a discussion which standards do we actually take, the student standards mm. or the educator standards, and some people said we need to start with the educator standards because only if the educators understand standards, then they can bring this to the classroom, you know, to fulfill the mm. standards for the students. Uh, and we were really torn and we thought we'd do it at the same time. So I agree it would be helpful if it's somehow in whatever certification before they start becoming a teacher. <laughs> I would agree. Every, whatever um, public, whatever um, education university I, it is, wherever, mm. in what country, it doesn't matter. I, I think, I think really the other thing is with COVID, I mean, it, it's absolutely essential right now. And I know that PGCE students are having to start at distance learning straight away. So yeah. they've got to climb that mountain straight away um, in the UK. It's, and it's, and it's, it's not only COVID, it's also we want to transform learning, right? Sure. We want to change yeah. learning mm. and that helps and supports it. So that's my motivation to do it. Mm. You know, I really want to the kids to be global collaborator or computation thinking program or whatever, you know, mm. I really, I believe mm. in this. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said. Transformation. I'm sorry, Yulius, but she's spot on. If we want to help a digital transformation and support a brand new culture, then this goes back to my point initially as well, where we have to start to instill that uh, sooner before they get into the classroom. We are not doing any service to students if we get there and we can't support where they actually probably already are. I mean, look at the learners that are in the younger grades right now. They're coming in with skills, uh, knowing what to do, but they don't know how to use them in meaningful ways. And how mm. can we support that it's if we don't have grades, the skills yeah. ourselves, right? Mm. Yes. We, uh, Georgina, we, we talk about this every single day in, in our office. So we have mm -hmm. like endless conversation and brainstorming. And, and in the end, sometimes we leave, sometimes we're good friends, sometimes we're like, we, it, 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 it's very, very mixed. But the what we agreed on is that ISD can help as they're like, they're not, these standards have not been invented. They're like uh, the best practices, the best examples from classes all over the world. So to be a global collaborator or like to be a digital citizen is not something that you need to teach. To, to learn basically it's something that you need to model you need to you need to become one of this you need to believe in these standards and to leave mm. them that's how you can teach them and again they're like best practices and they and also, help a lot if we talk about when we talk about digital citizenship digital. i've got to say yeah. that teachers need to learn that fast because they themselves yeah. their instagram their things yeah. i mean i've seen well, so many teachers who are not ready for that and not ready for that degree of um, viewing. I mean, even things like as soon as the kids found my name, they found my wedding photos, they went through everything they could. And, you know, I've been on the internet for a long, long time, longer than most people have, since 1995. Longer than McDonald's has been on the internet, I've been on the internet. That's how long I've been on the internet. So you can imagine the long tail of stuff I mean, the good news is most of it is computer science related, so they inadvertently learn something by tracking it down. But, you know, they grabbed every little morsel. And there wasn't anything wildly inappropriate, but they, 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 they thrived on finding me on the internet here, there, and everywhere. Um, and, and some teachers, they will have things that they're not happy with on Instagram, that they haven't set their Facebooks, they haven't set their Snapchats correctly. And... Before you set foot in a classroom, you need to get that all locked down and sorted Absolutely. and cleaned. 
but this is part of the thing, right? And mm. and uh, many schools now have that in their like handbook when you you mm. join, you know, you sign and you, you have to say, you know, I, I'm not visible or I'm hidden or whatever on my social mm. media and that I won't participate or you have to say that your opinions are private and not related mm. to the school. Mm. But like, I, I think we need to help educators understand that, yes, you need to make sure that you're not findable on the internet mm. if you have, like I do, and you won't find me. I have like a 50, 50 thing Instagram like it's not possible mm. to find me on there so mm. you know we have to help them know that though otherwise they wouldn't know people it, if you're not trained in the in our subject area James people don't understand how the internet works mm. how easy it is to mm. find things you understand mm. we have to help them with that yeah Oh, yeah. <gasps> in the chat. Neil is here. Everybody is here, guys. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Neil's talking about a mentor program. James, do you know about that? You come from the yeah. UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, um, that's what I was saying. So uh, you do your PGCE, and then in your first year as an NQT, you do get assigned a mentor. So it is almost a two-year program, but often as an NQT, you don't get much support. Um, so it is a bit hit and miss, but yeah, Neil's right. Certainly in the old days, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I'm not sure PGCEs even survived that anymore. Now it's straight into the classroom for a lot of teachers. Um, it's, it's pretty much a very sharp boot camp these days. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, on to our next subject. We've only got five, ten minutes, so we're going to have to whiz through these. Microsoft, okay. I would say this is the program that has jumped the quickest and is actually become a really good resource. If you want to learn about Minecraft, you want to learn about Office 365, you can just grab in there, jump in there, and they have put um, a course, like an hour or two's course for each one. I was surprised what good quality it was and, and such a wide variety. You know, for me, I was very pleased to see that there was a SQL program on there. Absolutely spot on. But somebody else might want something, on, say, on PowerPoint or Excel. And, and they do have a huge range of that. And they even have partners on there. So you get lots of plans. And things like Flipgrid are owned by Microsoft these days. So all of that's on there. Some of the charities. And what really blew me out of the water was the stuff they've got for dyslexia is fantastic. And again, they've brought in a partner to help. Um, and also things like their uh, immersive reader. So yeah, that is all really, really good, enjoyable stuff. So, and I want I want to shout out that too because that's recently changed in the last two years, James. The yeah, UI, definitely. like the, and so they've come such a long way. So we need yeah. to shout out Microsoft for that because I remember when I went on there to their courses like five years, six years mm. ago, it was not oh, the yeah. same. But you're right; it's much more user friendly. It has mm. the times, how long it will take you, and mm. it's a series of a modules into a certain unit that you'd mm. like to learn about. And like you said, James, accessibility is really good, and you can also mm. apply them. And once you've got your base units done, mm. you can then apply to become the MIE expert. You can become an yeah. MIE trainer. And so there's lots of room for growth and development as well for you to support um, ed tech integration in your Microsoft um, schools that way mm. as well. And Julius, aren't you guys a Microsoft school uh, as well? Uh, we're, we're a, yes, we're a general Office 365 school, uh, meaning that like servers, emails, and everything is on mm. Office 365. Um, as Verena discussed, uh, described earlier, the primary is an Apple environment, one-to-one, -one, and preschool and primary, and secondary is bring your own device, um, Windows 10 pen-enabled device, because that was very important, digital linking. And um, yes, most of our teachers, well, as of last year, were Microsoft certified educators, experts, and yeah, the the variety of courses you can find in lesson plans, and you have that Skype as a Skype was was a, like Flipgrid yeah. acquired by them as well. So Skype a scientist, and you have all these programs. It's very very huge, and um, yes, sways, and then they have they have a few interesting tools mm -hmm. and many many programs. Flipgrid, we use Flipgrid a lot. We use um, we just had a Verena help me with this the digital citizenship bingo. A game and one of that um, we, we we played bingo so we released like seven points and one of them was go to Flipgrid and record your the way you use uh, digital citizenship in your life basically mm. yes so yeah I love the fact the 
Microsoft program Go ahead. that it goes beyond tech or their tools as mm. well, like James was describing. It's not about only PowerPoint say how to use Flipgrid, whatever. It's also about the, 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 about global collaborator, or whatever. So it's yes. it's tech or software. Yeah. That's true. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to scroll through some of the, the courses that are available. There's quite a lot, really, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Many, plenty of yeah. courses. See, so even Pear Deck, which has got nothing to do with Microsoft. Yeah, but and, they integrate it with the they, they do, they do, they do. Yeah. Now, but now the whole of these Teams is the world that everything orbitates around. Yeah. Teams is the main platform that can embed all yeah. these applications. Mm. So, mm. Uh, yeah, Teams Nearpod 2. Exactly. So it's, it's all in here. And as I say, it, it's just really impressive how much is in here. Skype, of course, Paint 3D. Yeah, Lego Mindstorms. Everything, yes, computational you thinking. Know. So, based on ISTE, you can out of code, yes, you can find all these um, ISTE standards well represented in, in Microsoft um, resources. What I, what I like too, guys, is we keep talking about agnostic approach and pedagogy being at the heart mm. of everything, right? And so whether you're a Google school or you're not, you could absolutely take these Microsoft courses and they will inspire ideas and help you build your uh, ed tech agility because you've learned different ideas on different tools and how could we mirror that or apply the same concept in our own interface. So I think it's really powerful, guys. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it does not matter if you're a Google school and then because if you find something interesting on Microsoft website or on Apple, one of these webinars with, with mm -hmm. this amazing guy from Apple, you can take that and you can use your Google. I mean, not you not copy the content, right? <laughs> you get me yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you, I <laughs> but mean, you, if that is good, good training. Yes. yes if it's course, good actually. training, you can learn from it and reflect and say, I can use this tool or you know the tools. You, the tools are exactly you, that. Correct. You know. And yeah. also, also in the chat, there's been massive love in the chat on this topic, guys. Sati and Neil were talking about um, data analytics in uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, importance of pedagogy first. So all these things you guys have been talking about, um, and everybody loves Bingo, and everybody loves Pear Deck apparently. So that's also going uh, very positively as well. James, guys, just to let you know, James is on the session today, and he's going to cut us off in three minutes. And so we need to do, we need to wrap this up with a rapid fire um let's do a rapid fire of based on today's discussion what might you be inspired to take on next that next doesn't have to be tonight or tomorrow it could be you know in term two in term three whenever is next on your own schedule but what have you been inspired to take on from today's conversation who would like to start can we, can we all say loud oh, me, adobe I'm really <laughs> yeah i'm going for the yes, adobe one uh, yeah, because I'm done. I also it. <laughs> want to bring. I also want to bring the Apple teacher back to the teachers. We neglected a little bit. So uh, uh, Apple teacher for me in primary school, but why not also the Microsoft uh, and everything else? You know that we mm. provide more for the teachers again. Mm. I love that. Okay. And yeah, Shannon course, says uh, here, <laughs> yes. So much, yeah. <laughs> And I did I did a session on this in the summer, guys, for, um, I don't remember who, one of the conferences, maybe in North America, um, and on how do we pick appropriate um, professional learning that we want to take. So, James, maybe you could pull up Badge Ed Tech. That's a nice time to shout out Rachel Kothup, who is a Google innovator, a global GEG leader, and a super inspiring ed tech leader. Um, she's going to not be happy when I say I don't know if she's from Australia or New Zealand and working in the UK, but she's awesome. And you need to check out her Badge Ed Tech um, session because it basically links you to any of the different certifications that teachers could take. So, if you're interested in helping, your staff find um give them choice to pick what's meaningful for them this is a great um a great website to start mm -hmm. at yep that's uh, absolutely fantastic and i think we've given lots of people a quick roundup of, of the main ones available but lots of little apps lots of little bits of training and never forget when my son wanted to learn to play the piano what did he turn to books whatever else no there's always YouTube and it's always teaching you. 
Oh my goodness. Say, that's a, it. Yes. And what a great opportunity to shout out Sethi from Flip Classroom Tutorials, who's in the chat. Let's throw his YouTube up there, mentor James, and let's get this this awesome, inspiring ed tech leader up to 200K. He has some of the most amazing video tutorials on the planet for ed tech, right, guys? Yeah. Absolutely. And 200,000 subscribers. Yeah, he should be that, there soon. That's huge. <laughs> So oh congratulations. My, oh my. Almost. I really like the idea about YouTube because, yes, even we go to YouTube when, when, when you want to repair something in the house with a quick fix, you will go to YouTube and it's rather true. than. Huh. And with YouTube, you can do things at your own pace. You can watch them at two times the speed like I do sometimes. And you can really be um, flexible of where you're learning as well. Because some courses that you have to log into an LMS and you have to be on a, a PC to do that, right? But with YouTube, you can easily take your mobile or your iPad and cook dinner in the kitchen uh, while you're mm. watching Sethi's channel. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So next one, Sethi is like, Providing us some new recipes, right? There <laughs> we go. Add some. There, there we go. go. You got there. Cool. Eventually. Well, thank you very um, much, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys. This has been absolutely phenomenal. Big shout out to Verena, who is our guest today. And we thank hope you. she's going to come back again and join oh, us good. next Thursday uh, mm. for a very exciting session. It's a surprise. We're not even going to tell you guys. So make sure you tune in next Thursday, same time. Uh, more faces of everybody you see in the chat. Mm. And stay safe, guys. Keep learning. Keep your eternal learner flame sparking and learning, and we'll see you guys next week, okay? <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.